Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today I have Debbie Thompson on the show. She's a history reenactor, and she's done lots of reenactments of the Nancy Hearts, and we've done some together. We have. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Debbie. Oh, thank you. This is an honor to be here. Yes. Now tell us about the Nancy Hearts. Well, the Nancy Hearts were a group of women here in LaGrange, Georgia, who had formed together as a military presence in order to protect the city during the Civil War. All of our able-bodied men were gone off to war, so there was no one here to, to watch the city and protect it from looters or anything else that would arise. So these women formed a military group, and they were a recognized military group. Yes. Other cities in Georgia had developed women groups that protected the city, but none of them were as proficient as the Nancy Hearts in LaGrange, Georgia. They, they marched and drilled and worked with their muskets two times a week, and they became very proficient in this. And, and there was a time when they had an opportunity to negotiate a peaceful entry from federal troops into LaGrange. Yes, and what I like about the Nancy Hearts is that they said we need to protect our homes and whether it's a union troops who come through or confederate soldiers with ill intentions we right. need to be ready to meet whatever enemy comes our way that's right yes all right so the nancy hart says they trained were they very good at first <laughs> <laughs> no in fact when they first started working with their muskets and you have to understand the weapons they had to deal with is what was left over. After the soldiers had left to go off to war, they took the best weapons with them. So we had old flintlocks and old pieces that had been used just for hunting. And these women, having never fired a musket, were learning how to fire. So they enlisted the help of Dr. Ware and with his previous military experience, he was able to teach them how to use these muskets. And there was a time when, as they would fire the flint locks, there's a flash in the pan that occurs close to your face. Yes. So when the women would raise their muskets to fire, they would pull the trigger, bang, the musket would go off, fire would go off in their face, and they would shut their eyes. Yes. <laughs> so in doing that, <clears throat> there was at least one occasion where they, instead of hitting the target, they hit a hornet's nest, and the hornets, of course, were very angry about that, and all the women had to drop and run. There was another occasion when they fired at, or fired at the target and missed and shot a bull in the pasture. Yes. And I can only imagine what was said at that family's supper table that night. <laughs> yes, and you know what's so uh, strange is that it was the bull family's bull That's right. that was shot. And you know there are some other uh, things that are like that in the Nancy Hart story. Right. Uh, with when they met Colonel Lagrange on the on the streets up there near the college. I mean. How, I mean, I've never heard of anybody with a last name LaGrange before, right. <laughs> but the, the Union Colonel came through and his last name was LaGrange. And so um, I just love how that story has bits and pieces of wonderful things. It does. And when LaGrange came through, one of the first things that he saw was the feral gardens. Yes. And when his troops started to enter the feral gardens, they saw where Mrs. Farrell had laid out in the design of her garden with the bushes she had written out the word god yes and when the federal commanders colonel lagrange saw this he told his troops to leave the gardens and not to harm anything there yes and there was also shrubbery that said god is love that's right yeah that's right yeah so that's that's a wonderful part of that story that is yeah now let's tell about uh fort tyler because that's also in troop county and it was the last fort that fell during the Civil War. That's correct. And I know you've been involved in reenactments in Fort Tyler, in Fort Tyler. for a long time. That's right. So tell me the story about Fort Tyler. Well, when the federal troops were coming through Alabama and they were coming into Georgia, there were 3,000 federal troops that came to West Point. And the reason for coming there 
is because we had the railroad bridge and a wagon bridge, and it was important for them to not leave that bridge available to the Confederate troops. Right. So their target was to destroy those bridges. So when they came into the town, we did have a fort in West Point that was later named Fort Tyler, and it was there to defend those bridges, but there were so few soldiers, and the, many of the soldiers who were there were the townspeople, and they were the wounded soldiers who had been there at hospitals. So it was a very small number of people who were at the fort. So we had 3,000 troops against them, and obviously it was not long before the fort fell. Colonel Tyler had, or General Tyler, had ended up dying Three of his officers had died, 24 other soldiers had died, and they captured 28 of the remaining soldiers and took them as prisoners. Yes, and Fort Tyler's still in place. It's an earthen fort. That's correct. And it's located on 6th Avenue in West Point. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Okay, and so we're going to talk about some of the activities that have been planned for the celebration of the end of the Civil War. Right. Uh, because we were right there at the end. And also, it's a celebration of the Nancy Hearts and how they bravely protected their homes. And um, we, we just want to say that we are celebrating the end of the Civil War because um, we never wanted to have a Civil War, and we certainly don't ever want to have another one. Right. So, um, I think you're going to talk about one of the things that Kevin Dunn said at the play last year up at First Baptist and how meaningful that was to you. That was. The, and I would like to see uh, our thinking about the end of the Civil War and this being the 150th anniversary of the war. We're not celebrating the Civil War. We're, we're looking at it as the ending of the Civil War and the beginning of healing. And that was one thing that was brought out in the play that I found was so touching that in, in looking at history and learning about history, the only way to better ourselves in the future is to know what happened in the past. Yes. Okay, now let's talk about some of the events that have been planned uh, in Troop County, some in LaGrange, some in West Point, to celebrate the end of the Civil War and to uh, really highlight the Nancy Hearts this year. All right, so the first thing is that uh, First Baptist Church on the Square is going to do a play featuring the Nancy Hearts. The play was written by Dr. Baxter. Right. They did the play last year and it was a success and we asked them if they would do it again this year. And so that is April the 12th at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And prior to that at 6 o'clock they're going to have a display that the uh, Historical Society has put together that will show pictures of the Nancy Hearts, the officers, and give information. And also some of the local Nancy Hearts will be dressed in Civil War attire and will greet you at the door. So we're also going to be able to participate in the play a little bit in the first scene and in the last scene. Wow. So it will be a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Now, um, you saw the play last year, mm -hmm. and I know you've done lots of historical reenactments. So tell me what you thought about the play last year. I thought the play was wonderful. It was entertaining. It was full of energy. It was a musical. I love musicals. And it had such a touching ending to it that oh, I, I, you should go and see it. Yes. <laughs> sh it should not be missed. You highly recommend I it. I do. Yes. All right. And then the next uh, Tuesday after that, on um, uh, Tuesday, April the 14th, there's going to be a showing of the Nancy Hart's documentary that we did in September of 2014. And it's going to be on all the Georgia Public Service stations. I think you can see it on uh, Charter Channel 21 here. It will be at 8 o'clock that night. And so we want everybody to be sure and watch it. And uh, again, that is uh, Tuesday, April the 14th at 8 o'clock. Now let's talk about that experience of being involved in the documentary. Was that very exciting for you? That was very exciting. The whole aspect of it and 
searching for a location to film the documentary and meeting ancestors of some of the original Nancy Hearts. Yes. was so exciting. But the most exciting part was when we did film at Nutwood Plantation, which was a perfect background for the, pl for the documentary, we had at least 27 women show up dressed in Civil War attire, carrying muskets, and, and representing themselves as the Nancy Hearts. And it was so exciting to see that many women it, dressed out and marching. It, it was just a wonderful experience. It really kind of set you back in time and helped you feel some of what they felt when they met the federal troops and what they needed to do in order to defend their homes. Yes, and there were several scenes that were filmed and some of it was of the Nancy Hart's marching mm -hmm. and then there was a scene that was filmed of uh, Colonel LaGrange meeting the Nancy Hart's on, on the streets of LaGrange and that negotiation between uh, Captain Nancy Morgan and Colonel LaGrange and that was very exciting. We're gonna uh, do that again this year on Sunday. Um, that would be April the 19th at 2 o'clock at Bellevue. That's correct. And you're going to be in that part of the reenactment. Tell me about your right. part of that. Well, Bellevue <laughs> has for the last few years allowed us to, to have a historical reenactment or skit, as you would say of different aspects of the Nancy Hearts leading up to this point. So in the past, we've covered the, the women gathering and deciding to become Nancy Hart military um, group to begin with. Yes. And different aspects of it through the year. And this year, we'll be ending it with the meeting of Colonel LaGrange. Yes, that was really exciting uh, last year at Bellevue because we did a skit Mm -hmm. And we talked about our target practice and, and, <laughs> and how everything went awry at first. But then that the Nancy Hearts had become marksmen. They had. Very skilled marksmen and could hit the target, I would think, pretty much all the time. Right. Well, in actuality, because these women were able to train twice a week, they, they may well have become better marksmen than many of the soldiers who didn't have that opportunity to train as much. Yes, and there was an exciting thing that happened for us and it was that um, LaGrange Tourism came and made photographs of the Nancy Hearts and one of those photographs ended up being in Southern Living That's right. in the January issue, I believe it's on page 33, and that was a surprise to us. Mm -hmm. And um, then after the Bellevue uh, presentation, then this year we're going to be back at Bellevue and do the encounter right there again. And then after that encounter, uh, the LaGrange Women's Club is going to have a tea. And the tickets for that tea are $10 and you can buy those at Bellevue. Now uh, on Friday night of that weekend, the Legacy on Main will have a reception and they have um, displays of pictures by Mort, do you know how to say his last name? Kuntzler. Kuntzler, that's right. And he is a renowned uh, Civil, War, Civil War artist. He is. And he's, he's painted many paintings. And what's so exciting about this year is that he has stated that this is going to be his last Civil War picture in the series of paintings and it's going to be of the Nancy Hearts. So it'll be LaGrange Nancy Hearts meeting Colonel LaGrange. Yes, and I think the name of the painting is LaGrange versus LaGrange. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, there will be a reception at Legacy on Main on that Friday night, right. April the 17th, that begins at 6 and then at 7 at the Delavant there'll be a dinner. Right. And the Mark Kunstler is going to be at the dinner signing his paintings mm -hmm. and telling us a little bit about the making of the painting. Yes, and that painting will be unveiled yes. there. And also there will be clips of the documentary. That's right. Yeah, and have, have you seen the documentary? I have, and it is wonderful. It's wonderfully put together. It's, it's a, a real good 
um, picture of what these women had faced and of the history of the Nancy Harts. Yes, and then um, Saturday on April the 18th, he will be at the Legacy Museum signing uh, portraits that people have bought and also that will be a day for Fort Tyler to be highlighted. Oh. Tell me what's going to happen at Fort Tyler. Well at Fort Tyler during the the morning, I believe it's from 10 until 5, there'll be living history demonstrations taking place at the fort. We'll have Confederate soldiers, um, federal soldiers, and I'm hoping that we'll have uh, cavalry represented there also. And these reenactments, um, cannon firing, not cannon firing, but cannon, cannon firing demonstrations, uh -huh. not actual firing, will take place in the fort, and musket drills will take place in the fort, as well as soldier life. And then that afternoon, I don't remember the time. It, but it's that night, maybe yeah, 5 that, to 10? Is it 5 to 10? I, I'd have to, I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, but that afternoon, then the fort will reopen to the public and it'll be by candlelight. So there'll be illuminaries guiding you up to the fort and you'll see the fort as it would have been the night before the battle at West Point. Yes, and you know, um, one of the things that has amazed me about this story is that uh, the family of Sue Pearson, Sue is the has a great grandmother who was one of the Nancy Hearts. Right. Yes, and her name was Addie Bull, and Addie was 14 when she was in the Nancy Hearts, mm -hmm. and Addie had two sisters who were officers in the Nancy Hearts, and um, Sue, who is the producer of the documentary that uh, will feature the Nancy Hearts, had no idea that this was in her history right. until a few years ago. Right. And she came, uh, her sister came here actually, mm -hmm. and was at the museum, and, and Clark Johnson told her the story of the Nancy Hearts. And uh, the sister, uh, Sue said the sister really had no idea what she had okay. when she heard the story, but she came home and told Sue, said, you know, you do documentaries, that this might be something that you can do. And then um, Sue, the story was grabbed her heart. Mm -hmm. And so she started uh, moving toward doing the documentary. And um, we have just been privileged to be a part of this, haven't we? We have, privileged and blessed. I, I think everything has come together in such a way you would call it a blessing, that it, it all came together and that we're able to recognize these women who so bravely defended their town when you have less than 40 women up against 1,500 federal soldiers and that they stood up for their town. Yes. And I'd like to add also that we have a modern day Nancy Hart group who is also looking out for the interest of women and children in this town today. Yes, uh, Diane Colson, who used to host the show, was invited to a prayer conference up at the First Baptist Church on the square, and she opened that prayer conference with the story of the Nancy Hearts. Mm -hmm. And she was saying how brave these women were in defending their homes, and then she related it to the conditions of the city uh, that we were presently in, and she said, it is time for the women of LaGrange to again rise up and protect their homes. Well, Nancy Wardlaw, another Nancy, wow. <clears throat> was in the audience, and she took a pad of paper, and she wrote Nancy Hearts at the top of the sheet of paper, and then she signed her name and began to pass it to the other women. And in just a short time, we had 28 women who had signed up to be a Nancy Hart. And so Diane came to my house and she said, what are we going to do? <laughs> she said, we have 28 women who have enlisted mm -hmm. to be a Nancy Hart. You know, what does that look like? So um, we thought about that and eventually we said, that they would be the hands and feet of Troop Transformation. And Troop Transformation is an organization that was formed to provide Christian influence and support 
to what's called the Seven Mountains. <clears throat> and the Seven Mountains are government, business, education, family, culture, media, and the church itself. And so we held meetings for about nine months and um, gave information to the women who came about how they could impact the city. And a lot of them signed up for different things. Uh, there are still women who are uh, involved with the Emmaus Women's Shelter that came out of that group. And there was a lady there that started a summer camp for young boys who were in trouble. And so there were just many projects that we did in the city as a result of becoming a Nancy Hart. And then uh, we sort of went on inactive status and we said, you know, we will just wait until an opportunity arises in the city that we're needed. And it was about uh, four or five months later that I got a call from Clark Johnson and he, said, he told me about Sue Pearson and how she wanted to bring the Nancy Hart story to life again in the documentary. And then we began to meet, mm -hmm. meet you and Joe and I, and uh, met with Nancy, with um, Sue. Sue, and she said that she would like for us to do reenactments in the city just to build momentum right. and support so that uh, a documentary could be birthed out of that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it happened. How about that? I, I mean, from 2011, the meeting with Sue, until 2014 and the documentary being done, and then now the celebration right. of the 150th anniversary. So it's been, um, it's been a long trail, but now we're, we're here at the birthing of, of what we wanted to birth. So it's very exciting. It is. It's very exciting. And we just need to see where it goes from here. Yeah, that's right. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how you and Joe met. <laughs> um, I was involved in a gifted program in high school. And at that time, they allowed us to do whatever we wanted to. So I was interested in fashion. My mother sewed. She had taught me to sew. So I was going to sew a Civil War period dress. I was told by others in the community that I should meet Joe Thompson, that he could give me any kind of information about that that I needed. So I met him in the basement of our church where we had a youth parlor. Huh. We began a conversation that later led to him showing up at my house with a stack of books, all on Civil War period clothing. And it started from there. We met, we dated, we married in the bicentennial year, 17, oh, or really? 1976. Oh, really? Appropriate, yes. <laughs> right. So we had a bicentennial wedding. And the first thing he bought me as a wedding gift was a sewing machine. Wow. And I have been sewing ever since then. I sew 18th and 19th century clothing for museums and living history programs. Yes, and you had a lot of the dresses in the documentary. They were yours, right? That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> that is exciting. Okay, well, I, <clears throat> I want us to recap the okay. things that are going to go on in the city so that people will know what they can get involved in. Okay, okay on Sunday, April the 12th at 6 o'clock, they can come to the First Baptist Church and see uh, memorabilia of the Nancy Hearts and their, their part in the Civil War. And then they can go to the play that starts at 7 o'clock. And Kevin Dunn will be in that play again this year. Yes. And we'll sing at the end of that. And that was your most My favorite, favorite part. <laughs> your favorite part. And then uh, the next weekend will be filled with lots of events. Uh, it begins Friday night at the Legacy Museum at 6 o'clock with a reception. And you'll want to go in and see all the beautiful paintings that are there. Uh, then at 7 o'clock across the street, you can go to the Delavant and Mort Kunstler. Yes, <laughs> we'll be there and unveil the painting of LaGrange versus LaGrange. And you also will be able to see clips of the documentary there. Then the next morning on Saturday, 
Uh, he will be at the Legacy on Main Street and he will sign portraits that, that you buy and you might just want to talk to him about uh, the many paintings that he's done. He's a very interesting person and he's uh, in his 80s and so I know that he will have lots of stories that you will enjoy. And then there is, are the events at Fort Tyler in West Point. They begin at 10 o'clock in the morning. And they end at 10 o'clock. And they end at 10 o'clock. It's on 6th Avenue in West Point, Georgia. And then on Sunday, I really want you to turn out for this because we're going to do the Nancy Hart reenactment. It's the scene from the documentary. It will be where the Nancy Harts meet Colonel LaGrange and then stay for the tea that uh, will be at Bellevue. Be sure to get your tickets. They're $10 and they're available at Bellevue. There are tickets that will be sold for the dinner uh, that is at the Delavant, and you can contact Legacy on Main to get your ticket there. And then be sure to watch the documentary. That will be Tuesday, April the 14th at 8 o'clock on your Georgia uh, Public Service stations, and that's Channel 21 here in this area. Um, we've seen the documentary. And it's really good, isn't it? It is. I, I recommend it. <laughs> yes, yes. And so um, we are so fortunate to have had the Nancy Hearts here to protect our city. And Clark Johnson was telling me that there were a hundred antebellum homes here during that period of time. And we, we only have uh, 13. 13 here now, but they were uh, determined that they were going to protect their homes. And we're so um, fortunate to have had women as brave as the Nancy Hearts in our city, mm -hmm. for they truly made a difference in LaGrange and the surrounding areas. And I would just like to thank you for watching You Make the Difference and to remind you that the greatness that you have in you is similar to the greatness that was in the Nancy Hearts because when Christ lives in us, we have that greatness in us. So release that greatness that's in you and impact your city. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. Oh, come